Republicans and Democrats? Can we please stop talking about primarying Joe Biden? Who should run against Joe Biden? Will Democrats get behind Joe Biden? This many Democrats want an alternative to Joe Biden. Can we just not? The absolute last thing democracy needs right now is a Democratic primary. Uh, incredible. Pitch perfect. Phenomenal. Flawless. Impossible to improve upon. Like, oh my God, man. The fact, like, the Democrat, like, liberal establishment Democrats will never understand the concept of like doing better than you have now. This is like the eternal intellectual deficit of liberalism. It's the idea that the system is fine as it is and disruption is always bad ever under like all circumstances. It's insane. I want to suck all the oxygen out of our body with a vacuum. What the f are you talking about? This is satire, right? No. These people are so much worse than normal liberals. They're big D Democrat. Yeah, yeah. These aren't just like regular liberal voters. These are like intimately pro-establishment people. These are the kinds of people who get excited over Pete Buttigieg, you know? We're in late stage capitalism with a corrupt Supreme Court on a knife's edge between autocracy and democracy, and people want to spend $100 million to undermine our successful incumbent when the alternative is the twice impeached criminal ex-president or the man who is single-handedly turning Florida into a fascist dictatorship? Why? I know people are excited for fresh young leaders with bright new ideas, but those fresh young leaders will never get a chance if we don't protect democracy now. She's ignoring how we got to this point, which is Democrat neoliberalism. Yeah, she doesn't seem to understand that, like, the, the process of introducing new ideas, pushing people leftward, that is the thing that saves the Democrats. Like, the reason the Democrats are doing so poorly, it is so f***ing embarrassing. That if you ask a bunch of Republicans, hey, how do you feel about a higher minimum wage? How do you feel about banning trans health care? How do you feel about abortion? How do you feel about unions? All Republicans will vote like f***ing blue dog Democrats at worst and at most like Bernie Berniecrat progressives. And then like the, they actually go to the voting booth and they all vote for Ron DeSantis. You know, it is so embarrassing for the Democrats that like every position they're supposed to stand for is more popular. And yet they like lose in any district anywhere in the country. It's, it's insane. And, and the reason for that is stuff like this, right? Like the reason for that is because she, like, for example, how do you think Bernie Sanders, uh, or sorry, how do you think Joe Biden would have done in 2020 if Bernie Sanders hadn't shifted the entire Democratic platform left? Like it, it, we would all still be Obama tier Democrats if it weren't for Bernie Sanders. The only ideological progress that's been made in the, uh, in the Democratic Party over the past decade or so has been from Bernie Sanders. That's it. Apart from that, they would still be, because all like Democrats are like the, uh, they're like Ubisoft or EA. Okay. They are a gigantic bloated bu bureaucratic executive body that only knows how to succeed by replicating things they've done in the past. They don't know how to innovate. They don't know how to take risks or gamble. They don't know how to like produce auteurs or whatever. And then the Republican party would be like, I don't fucking know. Be like fucking Kojima or whatever, where they like throw weird bullshit out there. And a lot of it is actually like kind of bad, but um, it ends up developing like a cult fan base anyway, because they embrace auteurism and they actually allow a, like a relationship between the fucking, um, you know, between the, um, between like the, the people who consume the product and the people who produce it. There's actually like an engagement there. Ubisoft or EA are far bigger companies than anything like fucking, well, Kojima doesn't work with, uh, with, with this company anymore, but you know, like the, the, listen, the point here, okay, <laughs> is that she's dumb and I hate her. The fact is Joe Biden has gotten more accomplished in two years than any president in the history of presidents. In an increasingly Why is she so world, quiet? Joe Biden is a decent man with an incredible staff who knows what he's doing and has thoughtful plans for the future of this country that include women's rights and gay rights and workers' rights and voters' rights. Um, I don't know if they include workers' rights that much. And higher minimum wage and lower health care costs and environmental protections. It could be argued that the biggest reason democracy is winning in this David and Goliath story in Ukraine is because Joe Biden had the foreign policy experience and humility to gather world leaders together and build a coalition to support them. He can run on all of that. We don't need to replace him. We need to spend our time and money giving him a bigger majority in Congress. Do you, do you think that she's given any pause by the fact that a huge majority of Democrats would rather vote for somebody other than Joe Biden in 2024. 
like she definitely knows that statistic do you think that like like that at all like hey i wonder why that is hmm like i'm gonna reflect on this what's what's that stat how many democrats want to vote for biden in 2024 i don't remember how it was phrased exactly is it this biden 2024 most democrats say no thank you ap narkbull only one third of democrats say they want him to seek a second term, down from 52% in the weeks before last year's midterm elections. Wow, even fewer Democrats with time want him to run again. Wow, the great incumbent candidate, one where like a, a, a third of the party wants him to run again. Of course she knows, Vosh, that's why the video. Yeah, well, you, d d democracies don't work that, you can't go like, um, I know you want someone other than Joe Biden, but like, that's just who you get. You don't understand, like, that's just who you get, except, except your literal octogenarian candidate, you fucking worm, accept it. You don't get better things. Oh, oh, you like how in the Republican primary, they actually do have genuine upsets and how the establishment will back ca uh, candidates, but even if somebody from like out of left field wins, they'll still support him. Oh, you, you're slightly envious of the fact that everyone was making fun of Donald Trump when he came in, but then he ended up taking over the Republican Party. And that is, if nothing else, representative of the democratic process functioning within the GOP, if not, you know, without the GOP. Um, oh no, sorry, you get more Biden. More Biden, you worm. You worm. Sheesh. Look, for Democrats age 18 to 44, aka the age group that was the reason we did well in the last midterms and also the future of the Democratic Party, 23% support. Even if you're only counting Democrats ages 45 and up, it's not even 50. It's ju it's one point below 50%. But for people who represent the future of the party, less than a quarter. Insane. So he can get even more accomplished. Yeah, he's old. He talks old. He's a goofy grandpa who says things like malarkey. He's extremely old. Yeah. Who cares? By every measurable metric, he's an excellent leader. If we didn't have lying propaganda networks and self-serving chaos agents constantly trying to sell us on the idea that he's a demented evil pedophile out to ruin the country, and you just looked at the facts of his presidency on paper... There would be zero debate he was doing a bang-up job. The thing that really bothers me is just the fact that she doesn't seem to understand the idea of being able to do better. Like, obviously Biden is far, 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 far superior to Trump and DeSantis. I've repped that point a million times, and I'll keep doing it. If he ends up being the primary leader for the Democrats in 2024, then I will go right back up again on the vote for Joe Biden train, 100%. But yeah, she's incapable of perceiving a better world. She doesn't understand that the fact that the Democratic Party is so anti-democratic internally is the reason why we have like a do-nothing, middle-of-the-road 80-year-old as our front-running candidate, you know? Like, the, the, there's a reason for this. Um, this is a recurrent problem. There's a reason why the average age of a Democrat legislator is like 15 years higher than an average Republican legislator. It's because all, de like, Democrats are all old blood. Like, look at how much of a fuss there is every single time a justice dem wins. Does the GOP throw this gigantic internal fit with a bunch of articles on how disruptive the MAGA candidates who win are? Like, when somebody like MTG or Lauren Boebert or fucking any of the, like, Carrie Lake or any of the fucking lunatics who win across the country, like, when when they win, are, are all the GOP people like, oh, no, we can't... Da, 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 da. No, like, for the most part, they recommend, like, yeah, they're powerful and the power is what matters and we don't do that. They do, but they get over it pretty fast. They, they sometimes there are some like rhinos and neocons who hand ring over it, and right now there's some beefing between the MAGA crowd and the DeSantis crowd. But for the most part, the Republicans genuinely do embrace like change in power, as long as the change doesn't involve anything that's like progressive or good. Hey, you listen. They will embrace change as long as the change is bad. If you promise to make America worse, then you get to be on the GOP ticket, no matter how disruptive you are. You know, and that's that's unironically a democratic tendency of the GOP. How much of this is willful, willful incompetence in the Dems part? When I was younger, I used to believe it was malicious incompetence. I used to believe it was the Democrats being like the evil corporate um, controlled opposition. But the older I get, the less I think that's true. I, I just think this is an ideological failing of liberalism. Look at what she's doing right now. She's not a Democrat official, but she's repping that ideology. And as a product of that, she's arriving at a lot of the same conclusions. I really do think that people like Biden and Pelosi think that if you just stay the course, keep everything more or less the same, 
and like respect legacy institutions in the uh, in the Dems, that things will move ahead. I just think they're dinosaurs. I think they're dinosaurs and they're uncreative. You don't have to be a psyop to to do that. You don't spend a hundred million dollars undermining your own party to defeat someone who's doing a bang up job. You run your successful sitting president and you spend the resources you would have spent on a primary building the infrastructure that will defeat your opposition. You know, the idea of literally just like a party suspending primaries and just sticking with their candidate is the most anti-democratic thing I've ever heard in my life. Uh, like, dude, why, why do we even need the GOP to suspend democracy if the other major party in the U.S. just decides to stop holding primaries? For those of you who don't know, the GOP and the Democrats are not, um, government institutions. Political parties are private. They have their own rules for how they conduct primaries. If they don't want to run a primary, they don't have to. At all. There's no law saying they have to. They can do anything they want. They can choose candidates. To an extent, they have before. <laughs> yeah, super delicates. No, the party who wants to take your vote and force you to have a baby and tell you what you can read and what you can teach and what you can know. The people passing laws to tell people how to dress and how to act and what they can do with their own bodies. The party calling for a national divorce and suggesting that maybe Democrats shouldn't get to vote at all. The party that wants to get rid of everything from social security to public schools who have already passed laws to strip women of their rights and make trans people detransition. We, we, we know the Dems are better than the GOP, but this hurts the Dems. And force private companies to tow their policy line. You don't give those people the gift of fighting amongst yourselves. You spend... No, you do. Th that's how democracy works. That's the point. That's the... That's the entire... Your time and money working to put down that fascist, authoritarian, white Christian nationalist uprising taking over half the country. Joe Biden is better than any alternative the Republicans could put up. So if you want to win, how you feel about him is irrelevant. We don't need a new presidential candidate in 2024. We need to keep the Senate and flip the House. We need to fill the states with AGs who believe in the rule of law and legislators who believe in democracy. We need to pay attention to our school boards. Our current president is successful and he can win. We the most you can ever get from this attitude is a country where literally nothing ever gets done because all of our institutions keep wavering between 51 to 49% like majorities on both sides um, and nothing ever changes. Like, this is the, th this is like the apex of, of the, like, do-nothing institutional bias that liberals represent, where you don't actually try to, like, change or respond to the will of the people, or even listen to your voters. Where the GOP listens to their voters. I would say the GOP listens to their voters a little bit too much, to be honest with you. The Democrats have no interest in listening to their voters. Nothing. Nothing that Joe Biden has done is in any way influenced by what Democrat voters want. Literally nothing. He had a plan going in, and that's it. The party and him as an individual are both locked in. The only people who are even remotely receptive to what other people want are like Justice Dems and a couple of like particularly good candidates and politicians. Um, but not, yeah. We need to pick our battles right now. And a Democratic primary, it just isn't one of them. Sorry, not sorry. To be fair, a lot of people were dunking on this video. I'm not exactly the only person. 4.8 million views. Yeah, Jesus. Yeah, a lot, a lot, a lot of people were were. Oh, oh, she's in the comments. Oh, this is her post. Oh, when I saw this video initially, it was reposted. Oh man. Oh God, it's it's rough out here for her. I don't think she's a bad person or anything. I just think liberal brain rot is dangerous. You know, is yeah, she's fighting down there in the trenches. Hey, Vosh, I just wanted to say you're almost underselling the fascistic state of the GOP and Trump. I've been reading Robert Paxton's books on fascism, and oh my god, it's so one-to-one. -one. Uh, Mikhail Demkir, nobody calls the GOP fascist more than I do. Literally, I have the world record. Check Guinness, okay? Nobody on Earth. Check, check Ripley's Believe It or Not, all right? There's no human on Earth that's called the GOP fascist more than I have. Um... But you need you you need to maintain a, like a, a political force in the Democrats that are good. There's a, there's a reason why the Democrats represent policies that are overwhelmingly popular. The Republicans represent policies that are overwhelmingly unpopular, and yet there's still a toss up every election. You know, like there's a reason for that, and it's because of the way Democrats function. Somebody linked this and said she's usually more based. I I I don't know who this is, so I don't. 
Yeah, okay. So I'll, I'll watch this too, so we can get like a fair... ...is gonna lose. You know, the entire world said the Ukrainians were just gonna lose. That it was inevitable. That Russia was just too strong, too big, too powerful. Well, that was bullshit. The Ukrainians cared more. They fought back. They were told to surrender and they said, Hey, Russian warship, go fuck yourself. I don't know if I can handle this, guys. I don't know if I can handle neoliberalism. <laughs> And that is what those of us who love democracy have to say. That's the energy we have to- Oh, is it loud now? Sorry, I turned up the volume like way higher because the last one was so quiet. ...to embrace. Hey, Republican Party, go fuck yourselves. You think you can cheat and steal and lie and win? I can't- I'm sorry, I can't do this. This is literally like- This is- this is literally the equivalent of somebody like photoshopping together that last fight in Endgame where except like Captain America's Biden and like Thor is, I don't know, Delaney. <laughs> and then and then you see you see Thanos and he's got like the the silly Trump face. Like, yeah, I can't I can't do it. Yeah. I can't. Can't do it. She's saying shut up and enjoy your liches. Meanwhile, Dems blacklist all um progressives from election campaign funds. Yeah, people don't really understand how how like how bad it is out there. I don't think in the in the Dems will like actively fuck you over if you're not an establishment candidate. I give quite a bit. Oh yeah, I remember this in 2020. Scoop AOC withholding a quarter million in dues from the Democratic Party in protest and building her own grassroots fundraising for progressives instead. Based, I give quite a bit to fellow Dems. We fundraised over 300k for others, with over 50% going to swing seats. DCCC made it clear they will black blacklist any org that helps progressive candidates like me. I can choose not to fund that kind of exclusion. Yeah, like. Be because the Dems are basically like a corporation, like the actual Democratic Party is basically just a private corporation. There's a ton of internal bias on this, in this front, and you know it, it, they like are very selective in which candidates they support. It's a very undemocratic process. What is this? As the 2024 race takes shape, President Biden is following a strategy of asymmetrical warfare. DeSantis and Trump are igniting culture war firefights. Biden is focusing on economic benefits for working families. This isn't going to work. Okay, guys, I've said this before and I'll say it again, okay? This is very important for lefties to understand, okay? Whether or not you help working families, the proletariat, is irrelevant because people are retards. They have no idea what's going on, okay? If, if people are suddenly making more money, they could as much attribute it to like government policy as to a gust of wind, okay? It, it, there's... People don't know. They don't understand. The economics is complicated. It's so complicated that economists don't even know what's going on, all right? What matters is messaging, not the actual shit you do. Look at look at Trump. Trump didn't do anything with his presidency, and yet, like, people very distinctly remember what he stood for. Nobody thinks of Joe Biden and thinks, oh, yeah, he's the working man's president, because, of course, he's not. And obviously, there was a very public rail strike breakage that happened, like, right before a series of high-profile train derailments, thanks. Um, but, like, President, like, if, like, the thing that matters here is the messaging. He needs to, he needs to get up there on stage and construct narratives that people can follow along with. It doesn't matter, like, it, it, okay, sorry. Biden is betting that the non-college educated workers, especially those who are white, who constitute the principal audience for the Republican cultural offensive, will prove less receptive to those divisive messages if they feel more economically secure. Only if the narrative is constructed. If you build out a message, and the message is, look at the GOP candidates, man. All they're doing is screaming, trans people, trans people, trans people ban the bathrooms, ban the books. What are they doing for you? Here are policies I've passed. Look at how disgusting this misplaced interest from the GOP is. They're not doing anything for you. They don't like you. They don't care about... like. If you're charismatic enough, you can sell a good story. And the story is what matters. Because people don't follow policies on their own. The average person doesn't follow policy. Certainly not economic policy. Economic policy is really complicated, okay? You need to be able to give them a narrative to follow. In Biden's inner circle, the dominant view is the best way to respond. Also, you can't ignore the culture war. You have to make fun of the culture war. I don't want Joe Biden to go out there and say, um, yeah, we're pro-trans and we're like advocates for trans people and like the G GOP is transphobic and stuff. Because if they do that, like that messaging doesn't sell super well because it makes them just one equal opposite side to the GOP on the culture war. Instead, he should laugh them off. He should be like, oh yeah, you know, like I don't spend 
13 hours a day thinking about trans people like the GOP. I guess that's what they do instead of making policy. But yeah, no, let's let's focus on stuff that'll help you whether you're trans or cis. Or, or don't use the word cis, of course, because nobody knows what that means. But you know what I mean, whether you're trans or not. Make fun of them, like, like tear into them for the shit they're doing, but don't take the opposite side as though it's a debate. It's not a debate. Don't engage in debate on whether or not, like, what, like, what is a woman? Don't denigrate the messaging by, like, pretending that their bad faith cries for attention are worthy of some kind of civil discourse. Tear into them for the horrible shit they're doing and then, like, move on to constructing a better narrative. That's the winning ticket. I'd bet it on anything. I'd bet it on anything. I would go to any, like, DC Dem strategist in the world and yell at them until they embrace this. And I would feel confident that I made the world a better place.